good evening everyone distinguished uh, guests ladies and gentlemen over here and watching us live in facebook and youtube this is rudranarayan das executive director center for adivasi research and development welcome to all to this uh, world human sciences and management conference 2021 organized by center for adivasi research and development odisha in association with indian institute of management sambalpur central university of odisha koraput and revenso university kotak the broader theme of this uh, uh, international uh, symposium is ethnological context disciplinary practices of social sciences and policy trends on behalf of card i extend my profound gratitude to professor mahadev joyswal Uh, director in the institute of management professor dr sanjay kumar naik respected vice chancellor of revenue university and professor dr sarath kumar palito vice chancellor central university of odisha for the help and support the convener of this largest virtual con conference a uh, eminent indian historian professor chandi prasad nanda and eminent policy activist writer and philanthropist mr charudat panigrahi ji friends uh today's uh, session will be very important and thought provoking for all of us because this topic is very important and need of this hour friends in this evening we have with us professor luis miguel cardoso professor cardoso holds uh, his phd in modern languages and literatures in the specialty of comparative literature from the faculty of letters of the university of coimbra and he is also an adjunct professor at the department of language and communication sciences at the school of education and social sciences of the polytechnic institute of porto alegre uh, of the country of portugal he is a professor of communication language and uh, cinema studies on the higher education department since 1995 So, Professor Cardoso, we welcome uh, you to this uh, uh, World Human Sciences and uh, Conference Management Conference. In today's webinar, Professor Cardoso will deliver his talk on education and skills for the future lessons from the uh, COVID-19. Now, before inviting Professor Cardoso, I would like to invite uh, Professor uh, Dr. Srinivasulu Enes uh, for uh, giving a Uh, theme presentation of this topic over to you dr srinivas professor srinivas can you hear me please carry on हेलो हेलो मैं ऑडिबल यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल सर या good evening uh, all of you and uh, it's always uh, very fascinating to be part of uh, the activities of uh, card the center for adivasi research center from uh, the land of uh, odissi odisha and my good friends uh, including jana vikram kishore jana and uh, rudra pratap all have been doing wonderful work in this connection and in this uh, concept of uh, social science social science and management conclave by which uh, card has been drawing uh, resource persons uh, across the globe on uh, to speak on very interesting and fascinating topics is uh, actually a mammoth task that uh, card has uh, undertaken 
and and uh, from the bottom of my heart i can say that uh, you guys uh, have been doing a job which uh, most of the big uh, universities organizations like a central universities or uh, national level institutions uh, could could not do who receive a uh, you know, lot of uh, funding support infrastructure from government they are unable to do it but uh, you being such a humble uh, organization have been able to reach out to one and all across the globe and drawing a, a very reputed uh, academicians scholars to speak uh, in in uh, your program and especially uh, in this uh, conclave on social sciences and management and uh, every every week at least uh, two or three programs uh, you have been arranging and then i'm happy to be associated with uh, this organization as an advisor and uh, today's uh, program uh, by a professor from uh, uh, portugal is going to be one among such a very interesting uh, discussion and uh, we have we have a fortunate enough to have a professor from uh, uh, lisbon uh, portugal who will be speaking on a, a very interesting topic and i believe compared to the last two sessions uh, the number of participants are uh, uh, really good in this program today today uh, evening and uh, i i believe that uh, the, the the range of uh, issues that uh, you are able to cover through these programs is the reason for the growing number of participants uh, who are who are actively getting engaged themselves uh, uh, in, in uh, the activities of uh, the card and i'm sure that uh, today's program is going to throw uh, a light on uh, the various uh, issues that uh, we at uh, the center for adivasi research and development at uh, uh, odisha are trying to throw light on from not only uh, the perspective of uh, an academician from the perspective of uh, professionals leaders and also from the public point of view so that uh, kind of holistic approach uh, with which uh, the card has been uh, established and uh, its uh, management also being done in such a way that uh, it is going to look at uh, the different states uh, that are there with respect to the issues uh, the objectives and purpose that uh, the organization is trying to solve and uh, with this uh, brief uh, i would like to hand over the session to the organizers uh, organizers to invite uh, today's uh, speaker Uh, to present his uh, wonderful thoughts on uh, the chosen topic of his choice thank you thank you so much uh, professor sunivasu now i'd like to invite uh, dr cardoso please uh, carry on over to you sir thank you greetings from portugal uh, good afternoon from portugal good evening to our indian uh, colleagues professors um eminent professors and all the participants that are gathered here today um to uh, share ideas and to um uh, try to engage um a huge challenge that we are all facing with the covid-19 pandemic that is to carry on our duties uh, to our students in higher education secondary education all levels of education because education cannot stop and this is very important ideal that we all have worldwide education cannot stop knowledge cannot stop because our students deserve it and our students deserve to believe that they will have a good future Uh, a good future has professionals a good future has citizens and also good opportunities in the labor market so all this connects us to the topic that i've chosen for um uh, this session of course i would like to thank the kind invitation that was made by the organizing committee it's a great pleasure and it's a great honor to be here with you and uh, i hope that um, at the end of the session we can dialogue with all the participants and um, and try to share points of view and uh, and of course exchange ideas about this very important topic for us all so my dear friends i'm going to share with you a presentation 
about the topic that I chose for today. So I hope it is okay. So my dear colleagues, dear researchers, dear participants, dear friends, as I said before, we are facing a huge challenge. It's been a while since humanity uh, faced such a great challenge in education as this one that has been brought to us. The, the topic that I chose is, um, is from a common ground basis. Um, this means that we all share uh, concerns, we all share the need for international and national guidelines, we all share the need for guidelines in our countries, in our regions, in our cities, in our schools, because this is not a problem that is affecting just one country, it's affecting all countries. So the first lesson from the COVID-19 is that this crisis can unite all countries. This crisis must bring together all countries on an international basis in order to find out what are the best practices, what have we learned from this terrible uh, um, ordeal that we are facing with, and what are we going to do in the next years to prepare ourselves and our educational systems to go ahead with changes in order to help our students? So, dear friends, uh, education and skills for the future is our task, is our goal, is our objective. And of course, if we want to go ahead with this challenge, then we must understand that there are a lot of lessons from the COVID-19 and from that we can move on, but we must be optimistic because we are winning this battle together and together we will bring to our students a better future. So my friends, the main challenge now is that many of today's graduate courses did not exist 10 years ago. Courses like new media and e-business and nanotechnology and 3D design and supply chain management, uh, geomatics, recycling technology, 10 years ago, we were not speaking, we were not talking about all this. So uh, change is common to our societies. And we must understand that we must face these changes. Nowadays, we are preparing our students to professions that still are not available in the labor market. So the question is, what can we do to prepare our students for jobs that do not exist today? And the answer is, of course, we have degrees. Of course, we have higher education. Of course, we have curricula. We have the knowledge of skills to be learned, to be taught. But we must understand also that this is a reality that keeps changing. So higher education must be always on high alert in order to change curricula, in order to change uh, the basis of the degrees, the objectives of the degrees, and of course, in order to give our students um, all they uh, need to face the changes in the labor market. So let's go ahead and try to understand why we uh, need a different approach nowadays. So we need a new framework 
and that is absolutely vital. We now have guidelines from UNESCO, we have guidelines from the UN, we have guidelines from the OECD, we have a lot of um, um, groups and task forces connected with education uh, worldwide and in Europe studying uh, the need for um, the implementation of new policies and to go ahead with changes about our curricula in higher education studies. So first of all, my dear friends and my dear colleagues, these are four items that we must uh, see as vital for this effort. So first of all, we have learning environments, teaching, learning and assessment, building capacity and leadership and culture of innovation. So this means that we must connect these four domains. So where and when students learn, this means that we must understand the need of changing our habits, changing what used to be our learning schedules, um, what used to be our learning frameworks, because during the COVID-19, we had uh, to join education and technology. We had to move from um, a face-to-face face -face learning to an online learning, and we had to adapt very quickly. So another lesson from this COVID-19 is that we must be prepared. So we must give teachers everything they need. We must give teachers uh, not only the skills, but also the equipments. Because without equipments, without materials, without the software and the hardware, teachers that are true heroes, teachers are true heroes during this pandemic crisis. And we must, uh, we must um, congratulate all the efforts that were made by teachers worldwide to win this battle for their students. But of course, we must help our teachers. So let us give our, our teachers what they need. And they need, for instance, digital skills. This is very important nowadays. We are shifting from a, a paradigm from the 20th century to the 21st century paradigm that is hybrid, that connects uh, um, physical lessons to all, with online lessons. So we must understand that all this is necessary. It, it was, of course, um, brought to us in an emergency situation by the COVID, but um, moving on to a digital transformation in education was already um, mapped and foreseen by UNESCO and by OECD. So where and when students learn uh, is one of our uh, topics to um, face these four elements that are vital for us all. And then how teachers learn and teach. So this means we must understand what are our professional practice and standards, uh, peer coaching and mentoring, professional development, and innovative uses of ICT. And innovative uses of ICT is, of course, other lesson from the COVID-19 crisis, because we had to be creative. Uh, we had to manage skills and acquire new skills to go ahead. So this means that governments must have a priority and the priority must be education. If governments choose education as a priority, then our countries can move on and can be confident in a common future. Then what and how students learn. So this means we must change our standards. So 21st century standards. So we must think about the curriculum, the learning paradigm, the assessment, and again, 
innovative uses of ICT because our students uh, know technologies. Our students um, know smartphones and tablets and, um, and computers, uh, but of course they need to have a stable connection to the internet in our schools. They need to have equipment. So they need to have equipment and the connection in their homes. And without this, we cannot move on. So this is uh, another very important lesson. So our countries must work hard in order to give our students uh, the basics, the equipment, and then the skills in the schools, in our schools, so they can manage the equipment and the search for information and knowledge. And of course, develop, sustain, and scale school improvements. We need an innovation culture. We need leadership development. We need learning community. We need, again, innovative uses of ICT. Because a school is not an island. A school is not isolated. A school belongs to a community. So this is very important idea for our future. Again, another lesson from the COVID-19. Schools are not just buildings. Schools are a mainframe in order to give our students the knowledge, the skills, the values, the principles, so they can be excellent persons and excellent citizens not just excellent professionals. So this is all connected. Our objective is a holistic approach. This must be our um, focus, to give our students the opportunity to be active citizens, to be good persons, and to be good professionals. So moving on, I'd like to highlight um, a document from UNESCO um, that is called the Qingdao Declaration. And the Qingdao Declaration um, is about goals in ICT and the need to move on with the ICT. So this, um, this document declares that to achieve the goals of inclusive, equitable, and quality education and lifelong learning by 2030, ICT-based teaching and learning needs to be integrated into all sectors of education. And this is a priority, an international priority. However, it also observes that on their own, ICTs will not bring about the required transformation and that there is a need for well-informed, long-term policies and strategies. And, and this all belongs to our governments and to our countries. And of course, professional development and well-researched and innovative methodologies for educational technology to play a central role in building inclusive and sustainable knowledge societies. And we all desire this, my friends. We all wish for sustainable knowledge societies. And in order to achieve this goal, uh, we must, of course, follow this guideline. And ICT-based teaching and learning was vital during the pandemic and will continue to be very important in the next years. So ICT is one of the keys for the success of our educational systems. Again, Another very important report from the OECD declares that education needs to aim do more than prepare young people for the world of work, not just prepare our students to be great professionals, not just professionals, but also it needs to equip students with the skills they need to become active responsible and engaged citizens. This is very important, my friends. Students will need to apply their knowledge in unknown and evolving circumstances. Of course, we cannot predict the future. So what we have to do 
is to give our students the ability to learn, to relearn, to unlearn and learn again. And this is a great effort. So for this, they will need a broad range of skills. thinking, learning to learn and self-regulation, social and emotional skills like empathy, self-efficacy and collaboration, and practical and physical skills using new information and communication technology devices. So it's very important that they, that they can master technology devices, but more important is that they have the skills in order to use, to use technology devices correctly, in order to search for the right type of information. And unfortunately, nowadays, we have a lot of information that is not correct in internet. So we must teach our students the proper ways to select, to identify the information and the knowledge they need. So again, about the COVID pandemic, let us think about what the OECD uh, wrote in another report about the state of school education. And uh, this report clearly underlines that during school closures, digital resources became the lifeline for education and the pandemic pushed teachers and students to quickly adapt to teach and learn online. So this means that the opportunities that digital technologies offer go well beyond a stopgap solution during the pandemic. So digital technology allows to find entirely new answers to what people learn how people learn, where people learn, and when they learn. So uh, during school closures, digital resources were very important and they will continue very important in the next years. So this is one of the main conclusions of this report. And of course, we all agree that the connection between education and technology uh, has been a lifeline, a lifeline for our educational systems. And during this crisis, during this COVID uh, pandemic, the transition to remote instruction and the subsequent reopening of schools often have reduced capacity and other strict sanitary protocols has had a profound impact on teachers' work. Absolutely. And the crisis required many of them to acquire new skills and prepare materials suited to virtual learning environments. So teachers, uh, as I said before, are the true heroes of this pandemic crisis in our educational systems because they had to acquire new skills very fast in order to help our students. So this is why we must give our teachers all the skills they need to go ahead with the digital transformation to the digital, um, to the digital capacitation in order to go ahead with this major new paradigm of online learning. And uh, again, we must focus on another set of items that are very important. For instance, the World Economic Forum projects that by 2022, and at least 45% of all employees will need reskilling and upskilling to respond to changing work requirements. So this means that we must uh, be prepared in our higher education institutions uh, to give um, to all uh, professionals that are now working the possibility to get new skills in order to be prepared for these new changes. So young people 
also need the skills to rapidly learn, adapt, practice the resilience, and take advantage of entrepreneurial mindsets to respond to this reality with the ingenuity to earn an income. And all of this leads us to skills. And of course, skills are the basis of this um, change. And uh, this changing environment calls for a transformation in how we think about learning. So young people must learn to learn. This is a valuable lesson from the COVID-19. Young people must learn to learn in order to develop the abilities required to gain new skills and adapt, which will help them secure work opportunities. They must also learn to discern reliable information to navigate today's information landscape fraught with false and misleading information. And again, what about the employers? Employers overwhelmingly agree that young employees need soft skills, such as communication, creative problem solving, and entrepreneurial thinking. And international development practitioners offer soft skill curricula to support youth in education and non-formal training programs, but lack to crucial competency for youth today that we are going to discuss. So uh, I would like to highlight that employers also notice that everything is changing. And as everything is changing, of course, they need employees with uh, new skills and soft skills nowadays are very important. So higher education all over the, all over the world um, must give students not just knowledge, but also soft skills and the skills they need to uh, adapt to um, uh, these changes and to adapt uh, to new challenges in the, um, in the working market. So let us compare, for instance, the top 10 skills in 2015 and in 2020. So in 2015, we had complex problem solving as number one top skill. And in 2020, my friends, complex problem solving still is number one top skill. But let us compare the other skills. So in 2015, we had coordinating with others. Nowadays, we have critical thinking. Third, we have people management. Now we have creativity. And uh, notice, my friends, that creativity was number 10 in 2015. Now it's number three. And then we have critical thinking, negotiation, quality control, service orientation, judgment and decision making, active listening, and then creativity. Uh, my dear friends, I'm sure you, you notice that quality control and active listening are no longer in the top 10 skills in 2020. So this means that the world has changed a lot. So in 2020, 2021, 2022, top 10 skills are complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, very important skill nowadays, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision-making, service orientation, negotiation, and cognitive flexibility. So this is a comparison that was made by the World Economic Forum. And when we compare these a uh, list of 10 skills from 2015 to 2020, we can uh, spot a lot of differences. So these are the differences that um, can enable us to understand the changes 
uh, we must make, we must do in our educational systems because we must give all these skills to our students. Again, if we take a look about the skills that were highlighted by the COVID-19 crisis, then I'm sure that we all agree that these are some of the most important skills that we discovered during this crisis to be very, very important. So I'm talking about uh, perseverance, empathy, emotional intelligence, solidarity, my friends, solidarity, critical thinking, self-regulation, adaptability, adaptability, uh, facing changes, facing this world that is always changing, communication, compassion, creativity, digital, and resilience. Resilience is also vital because if we have resilience, if we have strong minds and strong hearts, we can move on. Of course, we have a very difficult task. We have to win this battle against COVID-19, but we will win this battle, my friends. We will win this battle for our children, for the children of our children, for our students, for our countries. We must win this battle. And uh, of course, this battle must be won by using our knowledge, our, our principles, our values, and the skills that our students require. What are those skills? Now, let us detail a little bit what we have said before. So skill number one is learn to learn to participate and thrive in a rapidly evolving world, youth must become power learners. And learning to learn helps young people rapidly gain skills and knowledge to adapt to changes and succeed. This skill is particularly important as the COVID-19 pandemic causes dramatic shifts in the work opportunities available. So this skill, learn to learn, is, I'm sure we all agree, one of the most important, if not the most important of all. And when it comes to learning performance, 40% is due to metacognition, organizing and guiding one's own learning processes, thinking and actions, but most teaching methods do not Prioritize those skills as myths persist that the learning relies on innate intelligence rather than developing skills and habits. So we still face um, some ideas that are uh, no longer valid in our world. We still face some paradigms. We still face some curricula that, that must um, must gain um, a new elan, that must gain a new enhancement by these skills and habits that we truly understand that are vital for our future. And of course, skill number two is connected with skill number one, learn to discern. So in a flood of information that we all know that is around us, youth must discern what is factual and reliable. This is very important. And during the COVID pandemic, young people are learning information, including misleading information about health risks. And this is very serious. To make decisions about their careers, so healthy information engagement skills are necessary for young people to learn effectively on their own and prepare to become resourceful employees 
leaders and entrepreneurs. So learn to discern, my friends, learn to discern. We must give the knowledge and the skills to our students so they can separate what is important from those informations that are not correct, that are not important, and that are misleading and false. This is the right path for success when we think about employment, when we think about future leadership and entrepreneurship, of course. So again, the World Economic Forum highlights four skills that are um, also very important for this major change of paradigm, this shift of paradigm. So skill number one is about future literacy. So uh, in general terms, literacy is simply the ability to read and write. Also, it may be intended with a broader and more insightful meaning. And nowadays, we do have a broader meaning. So it is time our society takes another step forward to cope with this new challenge. And to cope with this new challenge means that we must give our students the skills that are important concerning their expectations in order to them to avoid disappointments and that they may be strong and willing to invest and change and be excellent citizens in their communities. And skill number two is about systems thinking. So almost all the challenges presented by the effects of COVID-19 relate to systems. So systems thinking is a mindset to think. Communicate and learn about systems to make the full patterns clearer, improve and share the understanding of problems and see how to face them effectively. So this is not just an effort about one student and one teacher. So this is a global effort. This is an effort for the countries, this is an effort for schools, for principals, for teachers, for classes. And of course, this is all connected. We have guidelines, we have international guidelines about what uh, if, um, education uh, might be by 2030, of course. But every country has its culture. Every country uh, has characteristics that must be respected and must be followed, of course. So this means that we must think as an holistic approach on education and try to understand how we can connect these international guidelines with our country. These international guidelines with our country and with our schools, with our communities. This is very important. And skill number three is about anticipation. So the anticipation skill requires us to learn to recognize these possible futures and we were not prepared for this crisis, my friends. We were not prepared. So another lesson from the COVID-19 is that we must work on anticipation. We must think about alternatives, choices, possibilities. If something like this happens, what can we do? So we must be prepared. So this in practice means modifying our habits and behaviors to be better prepared for a continuously changing world. And as this world is changing, of course, we must be prepared for all these changes, changes in our countries, changes in international guidelines, changes, of course, in the needs of our students, changes in the needs of our teachers. And all this, of course, requires skill number four, that is strategic foresight. 
and strategic foresight is a big challenge. So this is a big challenge that requires a new strategic thinking attitude for governments, businesses, organizations, and people to better understand change and the future. And we will all be living and working in a future world that's different from today in significant ways. So strategic foresight is needed, not just for our governments, but also for our principals, for all our teachers. And if we have strategic foresight, then we can foresee what are the best paths to go ahead in our educational systems. So all this leads us to 2022 skills outlook, also by the World Economic Forum. So let us uh, compare the skills that are declining and the skills that are growing. The skills that are declining are manual dexterity, endurance and precision, memory, verbal, auditory and special abilities, management of financial material resources, technology installation and maintenance, reading, writing, math and active listening, management of personnel, quality control and safety awareness, coordination and time management, visual auditory and speech abilities, and technology use, monitoring and control. This means that these skills are declining. They are not growing away, but of course they are not so much important as other skills are. So let's see what are the skills that are very important nowadays. Nowadays, the skills that are growing in relevance and important are analytical thinking and innovation. and learning strategies, creativity, originality. Good afternoon uh, to Professor Lewis. Uh, am, am I clearly audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, so good afternoon, sir, and good evening to all the participants over here. Uh, so, uh, sir has spoken about education and skills uh, for the future, lessons from the COVID-19. Uh, I think today we are in a world where uh, there is a lot of issues with education because the entire system of education has changed with the pandemic. Uh, as uh, we have moved to an online mode of education, as uh, Sir has said, uh, we have moved to a very online virtual form of education and how we need to develop the skills that is required uh, today. Like uh, the skills are changing, the mindset of people are changing and the way we need to adapt ourselves, that is changing. So education, as Sir, you have said about education system, like education is not only about uh, uh, getting a degree, but it is more than that. It is more than getting a degree to de develop one's own skills, uh, critical thinking, and many other forms of values that is required. Education is not only uh, concerned or confined to a simple whole of uh, getting a particular degree, but it is more than that. And online education has a different mode of developing oneself. And that also, sir, you have uh, elaborated about how in the online times, how we need to uh, develop a creativity. And you have made, uh, you have given certain examples and cited uh, the 2015 and 2020, how there's a difference between learning, responding, and how to develop one's own creativity. So thank you so much, sir. I think this, this is very stimulating and uh, everybody should uh, enculture these things within themselves that uh, education and skills and how to modify their learning pattern in these times of covid and covid has uh, rightly taught a lot of lessons to all of us around here that it's not only confined to only uh, you know only educational degree but it is much more than that uh, receptivity and uh, adaptability 
and resilience building that is what is required so thank you so much sir for your uh, excellent deliberation over here thank you thank you so much to dr nupur patnaik uh, now i would like to invite uh, professor bikal charan das to go for his remarks and also conducting this question and answer session professor bikali charan das sir can you hear me dr nupur please uh, can, can you go for the yes, question yes i am reading out the questions so there is the first question uh, how a democratic and diverse country like india could integrate the concept of skilling in its curriculum given the fact we are still struggling with fundamental learning levels and what could be the probable concrete strategy so could you please explain this thing i think so you have you have been muted please unmute yourself no. i think everything is okay now yes yes sir thank you thank you so much for the question it's a very important question of course countries have their characteristics and diversity and uh, when i spoke about international guidelines i also emphasized that we must adapt those guidelines to uh, the country's cultures regions societies uh, communities and uh, of course this is an effort that must be um implemented locally so what we can do and i saw i saw a lot of questions uh regarding how can we um engage these skills and change our curricula so we have a lot of options of course we have programs we have schedules we have timetables uh, and we have curricula to follow but we can also um, start by uh, making small steps towards soft skills so level number 1 belongs to the teacher so teachers can implement soft skills on a daily basis on a weekly basis on a monthly basis and uh, each teacher can think like this so i think the skills that are most important for our for my students for instance in my community are this one and this one so what can i do about this so i can try in my classes to work these skills with my students so this is the first level this is the level of a local teacher and of course the local teacher must be engaged with the community for instance why not inviting some someone from the community some community leader um someone that is respected someone that is um uh, very important by their values and principles and invite them to classes to share their points of view in order to uh, the students to learn from the stories of their lives in order to learn about what has to be made in their community to change something to um to have a diagnosis for instance of um some type of problem that must be solved and what can we do to solve this so our class uh, can be can be changed into some kind of laboratory of ideas so let us try to um imagine what we can do to solve this problem in our community all this it's level 1 then we have level 2 and level 2 is about schools it's about principles so schools and principles have um of course their autonomy but they are they do not have full autonomy but regarding and respecting the autonomy of principles and schools then schools and principles must uh, understand that these guidelines of course 
these uh, new skills, these soft skills must be implemented. So let us work with the teachers of my school. The principal can uh, dialogue with their teachers and say, okay, what can we do with our curricula, with our schedules, with our timetables? What can we do to enhance these skills? What can we do? We can work together, for instance. We can uh, bring together different teachers in the same school to connect different domains, different topics, and try to engage uh, um, one skill that is very important. Uh, this is the second level. Then we have the third level, that is the government level. Of course, the government level is the most powerful one. And uh, at that level, countries must decide what is important for their future. And countries must decide that curricula is no longer a set of uh, pieces of knowledge, is no longer a, a, um, um, a set of um, uh, technology, education, and knowledge. Not just that. We need to focus on what our communities need. We need to focus on what our employers need. And if employers need, for instance, critical thinking, if employers need, uh, for instance, soft skills, uh, like uh, uh, social or emotional intelligence, so we must give these soft skills to our curricula. So um, I try to um, emphasize three levels of resolution of this problem. Of course, it is not easy. And we must go step by step. We must go step by step. And uh, each teacher can uh, make a huge difference in his or her classes. Each principal can make a huge difference in his or her school. Each school can make a difference. But of course, the most important thing is that our governments understand that the curricula are changing. And the international guidelines about curricula emphasize that we truly must give these skills to our students. So this is a multi-level approach. So everyone is needed from the teacher to the principals, to the schools, to the governments. So we all must work together. For instance, here in Portugal, of course we have guidelines from the government and of course, in each and every um, higher education institution, we have those guidelines. So we connect knowledge with the skills in our degrees, in our diplomas, and we have those skills when they go to the uh, labor market. So this is what has to be done. So a change system. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question is there. Uh, the, question, uh, the question is how technology can ensure the emotional intelligence among students. Um, technology is, is very important. Um, some years ago, we had a huge dilemma. And the dilemma um, was this, either we use technology in our classrooms or we leave the technology outside our classrooms. So what is the, the real path here? Nowadays, our students um, want to be connected. So they want to use um, social media, for instance, they want to use internet connection. So we cannot leave behind those interests. We must bring those interests to the classroom. So this is why technology is needed inside the classroom. And of course, for having technology inside the classroom, our governments need to give students and schools the equipment they require. So if we have equipment, if we have teachers with proper, proper digital skills, then 
we can think how the use of technology in our classroom can um, emphasize uh, working with emotions, for instance. We can have gamification. Gamification is a very important tool nowadays. And gamification has a lot of strong points. First of all, students like games. Students like visual games, video games. If we bring those games into our classrooms, we can also uh, work with them uh, in a very easy way because they will be taught with happiness and they will be uh, joyful during classes. So gamification is a very interesting approach by the use of technology and that we can use in our classrooms in order to work with our students a lot of domains and topics, including the emotional dimension. So another um, possibility is the flipped classroom, for instance. The flipped classroom has also a lot of uh, possibilities. So in the flipped classroom, the center of the classroom is the student, no longer the teacher, but the student. So if the center of the classroom is the student, then students um, gain responsibility. And with responsibility, uh, we have a new mindset and we have a, a big opportunity to change everything in our classrooms. So these are two options. We have a lot of options that we can consider. Uh, but to summarize, for instance, gamification and the flipped classroom are uh, tools, strategies, methodologies that can uh, give the teachers the opportunity to work with knowledge, but also with emotions. I don't know if we have other questions. Yes, sir, there is questions uh, around There's the last question. Uh, how can we shift the learning uh, from uh, mark-based to quality enhancement? Uh, yes, um, read here um, some questions um, and, uh, and I will begin my answer by saying this. Um, our students are being brought up with the need to be successful. This means to earn money and to be successful in their uh, professional actions and uh, choices. And sometimes if we highlight too much, this need for perfection in the labor market, we are forgetting something that is essential. We cannot leave behind the values and the principles because we also want them to be very good persons very good citizens. We need them to um, engage in their um, communities. We need them to be active in their communities. So this is all connected with assessments and goals. This is all connected with curriculum design. What are our choices in the curriculum? And what are the goals that we want to achieve? So the question is this. What do, you, what do we want from our students? Do we want our students just to be excellent professionals and that they earn a lot of money and that success is earning a lot of money? Is this the question? I don't think that this is the question. The question is, what do we want from our students for them and what do our students need? They need, of course, knowledge. They need their degrees, of course, but they also need their skills to be flexible, to learn to learn, to understand the changes of society, but also 
to be connected with their communities and the changes we are facing today. So this changing um, of paradigm must begin in the third level that I was talking about. The third level is, of course, the educational system. But of course, we have the second level, the schools and the principals. And if a principal can uh, talk with uh, teachers and colleagues and say, OK, we have curricula, we have schedules, we have these guidelines from our Ministry of Education that we must follow, of course. But what can we do to enhance and go further? What can we do to give our students some extra knowledge and skills in order to change their mindsets? Because success, it's not just about money. And success is a wide context. And success means that we are persons with values. And we want students with values in our communities. We want them to be um, good doctors and engineers and um, uh, other types of, of, um, of professions, of course. We all, we all want the best for them, but we must change the most important thing in our curricula, that is the base of the curricula. What are we giving our students? Are we giving them the proper tools or just knowledge? Because just knowledge is not enough nowadays. Nowadays, a student must be able to learn by himself because a student has a lot of possibilities to learn, has books, has internet, has uh, uh, newspapers, has uh, media, has social media. He has a lot of information around him or her. So what we must do is to give him or her the possibility to learn by himself. So the learn to learn by himself. And with all this, I think we can move some things that are truly connected with the heritage of some educational systems that are still in the 20th century. And nowadays, we live in the 21st century. We must adapt. We must evolve. We must be flexible. These, these are the most important choices for us all. Well, thank you, Dr. Tanpur Patnaik. And uh, sir, uh, if time permits, I will uh, like to ask one last question to you. Uh, what is your, what will your forecast in new normal society as concerned? There are uh, the 21st century arena, what witnessed the crisis and this pandemic and what uh, smashed the entire education system and collapses many universities, many institutions. What is your idea in particular this uh, serious issue and what uh, will you see as a fine minds of the globe as of now? about online education and exactly what would be the future of online education? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your question. It is, it is a very important question. Uh, I would like to begin by saying that one of the most important frameworks and guidelines that we have today is the so-called Learning Compass 2030. And the Learning Compass 2030 that is connected with UNESCO and is, and is connected with uh, UNESCO's guidelines and also with OECD's guidelines offers a huge potential for changing. And the Learning Compass is all about the students' choices. And this is the most important thing for the new normal. So the new normal is about uh, different sets of frameworks. We used to work with a framework with um, online learning separately from face-to-face -face learning. 
what we learned from the COVID-19 crisis is that hybrid processes, a hybrid framework of learning um, has resulted very well. And so the new normal uh, has the guidelines from um, international uh, thinkers are now pointing to are, we must um, uh, point out that curricula must change. And this is a message that I have highlighted during this um, uh, discussion with you. So higher education must change and must be flexible. So our main goal is to give our students the possibilities uh, to, um, to be active, to be uh, professionals, and of course, to have those skills that are very important, like critical thinking, um, and the possibility to uh, separate what is true from, from what is false in social media, for instance. So the new normal is about uh, shifting paradigms. It's not just leaving behind everything that we have in the 20th century. No, not at all. What we need in the new normal is to use what we had in 20th century, what we have gained with the online learning experience, because we already had online learning. Let us not forget that. We already had online degrees. We already had higher education uh, institutions worldwide around the world that used online with great success. And this is very important, for instance, in uh, countries, in, in great countries, in big countries with um, gr huge territorial areas. So online is one of the key factors for um, a democracy approach of education. So this is very important. So the new normal will be a connection between what we had in the 20th century, what we learned from the COVID-19 crisis, blended learning, e-learning, face-to-face uh, -face physical learning, knowledge, education, principles, values, skills, soft skills. All this, all this is um, about a great change uh, for us all. So this means that we teachers, we researchers are being um, called to be active, um, uh, um, change, changing personalities in this, in this endeavor. And this is not just something that is going to change from one day to another, of course. Everything is changing. And everything is changing internationally in each country, in our schools, in our classes. We are all change makers. This is another lesson. We are all active participants in this change. I'm talking about teachers. I'm talking about principals, schools, and uh, um, communities, and the governments. But uh, another lesson that is vital in this new normal is that we cannot work alone. We must have networking basis about education. We must share all those good practices that we have from different countries. Because if we share, we can grow. No man is an island. We cannot be isolated. We must communicate, we must share. Only by sharing, only by solidarity, is that we can move ahead. And this is vital for us. And as I said before, it is vital for our students. Our students deserve the best future we can give them. So it is all in our hands. So let's join together, let's work together, and the new normal, is about working together, working together with different paradigms, different solutions, flexible solutions, and of course, with solidarity. Thank you.
Thank you so much, sir, for wonderful answer. Now I'd like to, uh, Professor Bikroli Charan Das, uh, the uh, Professor of Education, Ravensa University, go yeah. for any quick comment and also the formal vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with your kind permission, sir, uh, Professor Lewis and uh, Dr. Vikram uh, Jena. Uh, I would like to uh, request uh, my friend from Mizoram University, Professor uh, Loknath Misra, to have a quick comment uh, on this uh, the bright uh, future, uh, whatever said by Professor Lewis. Sure, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Professor Thank Loknath you. Misra from Mizoram University. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Michael Charandas and uh, Professor Lewis for delivering a nice lecture uh, in this, uh, uh, how to promote the skills during this pandemic period. Uh, this program is uh, very nice and uh, he has delivered a good lecture, but one question is coming in my mind. Uh, he has uh, delivered the skills uh, regarding the critical thinking and emotional intelligence how we promote the skills, whether the teachers are well trained or not, and how, what, what strategy we will adopt uh, to promote the skills among the primary school teachers as well as the secondary school teachers. Uh, if you uh, elaborate it uh, for, for five minutes, then it should be uh, fruitful to all these uh, participants also. Thank you, sir, for your question. Uh, this is all about teacher training, and teacher training is the answer for um, this very important question. So teacher training uh, must be absolutely vital in our schools. Training must be absolutely vital in every educational system, every country. So in order to our teachers to have the skills to teach their students. First of all, we need teacher training programs that must be developed and implemented by the ministries of education in each country. And of course, in different schools, in different levels of education. So teachers must be able to pursue their goals of understanding how these skills are important. How to get these skills is a matter of teacher training. So courses, courses, uh, online courses, MOOCs, for instance, are very useful. And of course, teacher training can help teachers to develop these skills, to enhance these skills, and then they can move on and they can teach their students these same skills. So the answer is a, a very profound and systematic approach about teacher training in each country, in each school, in each region to give teachers what they want what they need, what they desire, what they expect. And of course, a teacher is always willing to learn. He is the learner of learners. And the teacher using all that is going to learn with these teacher training programs about new skills, then they can implement those skills with their students. I think this is the path and this is a path that needs government um, um, appraisal and government uh, very direct guidelines and of course, guidelines from principals and schools. And principals must understand that their, their teachers must have these skills. So uh, my dear colleagues from, from different schools, let us think, what can we do to help my uh, teachers? What can I do to help my teachers? So let's think about uh, an online course, for instance. Let's think about a MOOC, for instance, about soft skills. And then we can go ahead. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Professor Lewis. I have uh, you have clearly mentioned about the MOOC and the professional development of the teachers. Uh, so the professional development of the teachers you have highlighted on MOOC the in, uh, in Indian context teachers are not aware about in the primary and secondary school teachers are not aware about the MOOCs. Uh, though I have developed 40 modules for uh, in MOOC uh, for pr primary school teachers and secondary school teachers, and uh, you can find it in the SWEM platform. But uh, the teachers we we want the teachers be through the book and they will be professionally um, trained or professionally oriented so that uh, the teach uh, in in your country I, I don't know what what is the what is the situation of your country but uh, in uh, in the indian context i am telling that uh, uh, the teachers are not aware about these things so the training program is needed uh, for the development of the professional development of the teachers and uh, for the uh, enhancement of the knowledge and our about the MOOC courses and our about the uh, development of the skills. So thank you very much. You have answered very clearly and you have uh, developed a nice lecture. I have listened to uh, total uh, of your lecture and thank you from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was it was a great pleasure, a great honor. And yeah. uh, of course, uh, these are ideas, these are ideas, these are points yeah. of view. And uh, I shared some points of view that are connected, of course, uh, with the reality we have in Portugal and we have in Europe. We have to, we have to uh, see and analyze what are the realities in different countries, of course. Yes, yes. And, yes. So we must be flexible. We must yeah, be flexible. Like to uh, request it. Uh, if possible, uh, I may uh, you can give your contact address so that we will change exchange our ideas. And uh, I am adding the Department of Education in Mizoram Central University Public University, so I can exchange the ideas and I can uh, contact you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely, of course. Okay. Uh, I see a quick comment from uh, my friend, uh, Professor. Uh, uh, Amul Acharya uh, from uh, FM University, Odisha. Uh, Professor Acharya, is there? Uh, uh, Acharya? Yes, yes, uh, I'm there. Okay. I, it's a wonderful program. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I think he has delivered all the aspects uh, and also he has cleared the concepts. So nothing to ask as such. So thank you for uh, inviting us to join in this program. And thank you, Professor Luis for your wonderful deliberation. Thank you, sir. Uh, from Sambalpur University, I, I request uh, Dr. Sravan Kumar uh, to have a quick comment. Uh, at the outset, let me to thank Professor Lewis for giving an insightful deliberation. And uh, I must say that it is unarguably, uh, I mean, we all should agree that this unprecedented pandemic has unfolded uh, the various aspects of our educational practices across the globe. Uh, what I would say is that uh, there is no more single agenda of knowledge dissemination rather than skill building and resilience building as a multidisciplinary approach is the call of the hour. And this is a global phenomena, what I think. And with this proposition, what I could say is that it is not only to think of the curriculum, but also we have to revise, we have to think of the new pedagogical practices that we are following across the globe in the different countries. And probably it is the right time to have a collaboration at different levels of policy, program, and people level. And I must thank Professor Lewis and Cord also for setting the right tone. And probably initiative like this can probably give us a new direction of how to integrate the you know, real problems and mitigating those issues with the classroom situation. And I must take this opportunity to thank, uh, to thank the organizer and uh, Professor Lewis for giving us a very insightful you know, uh, direction, probably such kind of thing could unfold new uh, problems and we will be in a position to deal such kind of situation. Thank you so much. I request uh, Professor Nina Das from uh, GM University, Sambalpur to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, sir. 
Uh, am I audible um, uh, to all of you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. Honorable uh, dignitaries uh, present uh, in the virtual dais, today's esteemed uh, resource person of this event, uh, Professor Luis Cardoso, sir, and uh, most respected professors present in the event, and uh, all resource scholars and students of various universities of India, I really feel obliged to propose a vote of thanks on this platform uh, on behalf of Center for Adivasi Research and Development, Orissa. I extend a really hearty vote of thanks to our esteemed chief speaker, Professor Luis uh, Michael Cardoso, sir, Professor Department of Language and Communication Sciences, School of Education and Sciences, uh, Polytechnic Institute, Portugal, sir, your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path of learning, particularly in COVID era. Our gratitude to you, sir, for gracing the occasion and sharing your innovative ideas and experiences with us today. I need to mention my deepest sense of appreciation on the behalf of Center for Adivasi Research and Development Card, Orissa. And uh, whatever you have shared, if the if the center of the classroom is students, the students will take responsibility. That will that will cover uh, most of our problems. And and thank you so much, sir, for gracing the occasion. Uh, an event like this cannot happen overnight. It needs planning. It bursts eye for details. Uh, special mention and thanks to esteemed director, sir, Professor Vikram Kesari Jaina, sir, uh, and executive director Rudranaran Das, sir, for his untiring effort to conduct this global event. I'd also like to thank the dignitaries. Professor Chandi Prasad Nanda, sir, uh, Sri Charu Dutta Panigrahi, sir, uh, and for conceptualization. Uh, and uh, as you, you all have heard, sir, Professor Srinivasul, sir, uh, and Dr. Visi Das, sir, uh, Dr. Gurudev Meher for coordination, Nupur ma'am, and the whole team. My sincere gratitude to uh, the patterns of the program, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sanjay Kumar Naik, sir, Ravensa University, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sarat Kumar Palita, sir, Vice Chancellor, Central University of Odisha, Honorable Director, um, IIM Sambalpur, Professor Mahadev Jaiswal, sir. But last, not the least, a big thank you to each participant Participants, particularly Professor Loknath Mishra, sir, uh, pro and Professor Amulya Kumar Acharya, sir, Shravan Kumar Bhav, even all participants who became part of this learning process and participated so gracefully. Thank you all, uh, uh, and uh, thank you all for attending this event, um, and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, to propose a vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, that's sir. Uh, I I switch over to that sir. Thank you very much, uh, madam, uh, for giving a very comprehensive vote of thanks to um, and the larger uh, uh, participants uh, in our uh, audience. Uh, I, I I request uh, all the participants to participate in further sessions. Uh, the card is doing a very very good job. Uh, and uh, it has provided a global academic uh, platform and we have to participate and learn and learn. As uh, Professor Lewis said, the teacher uh, uh, is the learner of learners. So the teacher uh, uh, needs to be a learner, uh, needs to continue as a learner for a long period, for a life uh, as a lifelong learner. So this is the a message uh, we learned from this session, teacher as a learner. Thank you very much, uh, Director Sir. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you, Professor Lewis, for for a long, patienceful uh, time spent with us, and looking forward for future engagements. And immediately, I will write to you uh, with a lot of uh, collaboration with your university and Ravensa University as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Jena. There is an announcement. Uh, the next session is uh, tomorrow. 
Uh, the next uh, tomorrow's speaker is uh, Dr. Sudip Kumar Nanda, Indian Administrative Service uh, Advisor, National Disaster Management Authority, Government of India, former mem member HUDCO, and former Additional Chief Secretary, Government of Gujarat, will be speak on integrating integrating ethnic community in policy making. So uh, we will all uh, we, we will look forward to you to join uh, next session in tomorrow 7:30 p.m. Thank you. The meeting is Thank concluded you. now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Lewis. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Sir. It was a great pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Indeed, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I hope we can meet again. So, all the See best. You, all See the you, best. Sir. Sir, we will we'll, we'll invite you in India, sir, for physical mode in your university. No, oh, that would be a great pleasure, my friend. That would be sure, a great pleasure. Sure. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you. Congratulations to the organizing committee again. A great endeavor. Absolutely excellent organization. Thank you so much. And thank you, of course, to all the eminent professors that we have here today, all the participants. Again, it was a great pleasure. I hope you can meet again. So. Uh, see you soon and um, please take care and all the best and warm greetings from Portugal. Thank you, sir. And namaste from India, sir. Namaste. Namaste from India, sir. Namaste. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, please, Mr. Pavan Kumar, are you uh, want to say something? Hello, nothing, sir. Actually, I wanted to thank, sir. It was really the great opportunity to be with, sir. Sir, please invite more and more students to engaging their ideas into this global platform. And they should live in a dream world, right, sir? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Those who are in my contact, sure, I will inform. And uh, my guide is... Uh, and Dr. Lokhrad Mishra, sir, and under his guidance, uh, I'm working. So I will inform to the respective, uh, you know, teachers and a student also to join the next, uh, you know, uh, seminar, uh, whatever the program is there, next webinar. Definitely, definitely. And you can invite much as possible students because we are looking forward to one of the largest uh, world's uh, digital webinar of this. And uh, this is not possible through one and two. We need uh, extensive our collaboration, right, sir? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Teamwork is, sir. Uh, it, it is a uh, great to do something good. Okay, so really, sir, we will try my best, sir. Thank you very much, okay. sir. Thank you, thank you. I am from uh, Sikkim, sir. Also, I am working here in the uh, teachers training college. So those okay. who are in my context, sure, I will inform, sir. Fantastic, fantastic, then. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Good night, sir. Okay, good night, sir. Oh, we can leave now, sir.
Okay, sir, now we can leave, sir. Sir, tomorrow is the same link uh, we are going to follow or yeah, something else. So maybe inform the tomorrow's link. The same link should be there. Yeah, something different. <laughs> 